listening to the Sermon Audio Podcast from Redeemer Lutheran Church and Pastor Paul Pett. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our Gospel reading, and I'll read just a portion of that one more time. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even when you saw it, oops, we lost part of the gospel reading there, Ben. You did not afterward change your minds and believe him. This is our text. Please bear with me. Father, we ask, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Work in our minds. Work in our hearts. Work in our souls. True faith and sincere repentance. Help us to see in all the different ways in life where we have rebelled. Rebelled against your authority. Rebelled against you. And help us in that sincere repentance to turn back to you. And in that way, we live through your forgiveness, through your love, through your mercy, through your grace. And as we live in that grace, that we may willingly and faithfully share it in your name. Amen. So before I go to my question, I want to kind of lead you into some of the thinking that you know, first came to mind as I'm preparing for my message. And one of the things that came right to my mind as I'm reading the gospel reading is uh, going back to the years where uh, I would go and uh, take our youth to youth gatherings. And I, I did that at Aubrey Parish that I served up until, you know, we got Alex here where he was started to do it. And um, one of the things I loved to do at youth gatherings was listen to one band in particular. It was probably my favorite, and I think probably our kids started to enjoy them as well. You know which one I'm talking about, guys? Lost and Found. Exactly, Lost and Found. And uh, Lost and Found is a favorite of mine, and, and there were some songs that they did that they didn't put in some of the CDs that they put out. And one in particular was called the Lutheran Song. And the Lutheran Song was a song where they listed a whole bunch of celebrities that were baptized Lutherans. Now, um, I'm going to say just a couple of names that I'm sure some of you are going to recognize very easily. So, one of the names that's probably easy to recognize, uh, especially here as not their most favorite football announcer, Troy Aikman, baptized Lutheran. Yeah. Um, they recently had a concert nearby, Ace Freely from KISS, baptized Lutheran, okay? Uh, Supreme Court Justice, now gone be the Lord, uh, William Wenchrist, baptized Lutheran. And the author and the performer of the Authority Song, Mary, I know you know who that is. Yeah, John Mellencamp, baptized Lutherans. And so that's the thought that I'm going into this message with to get you to the authority song. So I know that was a long way to get there, but here we are. And so I want you to think that really what we're talking about in the gospel reading is authority. And, and that's what the Pharisees, that's what the, the teacher of the law, the chief priests, came at Jesus with right away in our gospel reading as they asked him the two questions basically at the same time. Notice in verse 23, by what authority are you doing these things and who gave this you this authority? Did they already know the answer to this question? Who says yes, they did? Who says no, they didn't? Who says I don't know, tell me. <laughs> hey, and, and the point of this is authority 
that Jesus had, they already knew the answer to. They already knew where it came from. Why are they asking again? Important thing to know is when this takes place. This takes place on the Tuesday of Holy Week. Why are they asking again? Trap. They're trying to trap him. They're finding information. They're looking for food or fuel for the fire of a tribe. That's why they're asking again. And so they ask, by what authority and who gave you this authority? But Jesus traps him with it. Months earlier, if you would, John, that other verse from John in chapter 10. Months earlier, this takes place. At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking the temple in the colony of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you're the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. Did they know already? They knew the answer. The problem was they didn't like the answer. Because they didn't like the answer, they refused it, rejected it. What's the word for the day? They rebelled against it. And it's so important that we see the two words that go hand in hand. If you are rebelling, you are rebelling against an authority. So that means you're committing a sin against one of two commandments. Who can name them? A hint. They start each of the tables of the law. First commandment would be first commandment. You shall have no other gods. What does this mean? Read with me. You should fear, love, and trust in God. Above all things, what's the next one? Fourth commandment, honor your father and your mother. Is that exclusively really father and mother? No, that means all authority. You would not believe how many people who have been confirmed Lutheran who do not know that. It includes all authority. But notice where it begins. It starts in the home. And don't let any governmental agency, don't let anybody from Washington, don't let anybody from Madison tell you different. It starts in the home. That's what God says. And as it starts in the home, we should fear and love God so that we do not despise or anger our parents or other authorities, but... Honor them, serve and obey them, love and cherish them. Why are we having all the problems we're having in our society right now? One word. Rebellion. They're not only rebelling against earthly authorities, but they're rebelling against God's authority. And so there's nothing different under the sun. They refused to recognize Jesus' authority because they didn't agree with him. And that's what we're seeing in our world today. I'm going to give you a couple of examples that you may, you may have made or not heard of in our news recently. How many of you have heard about the revival that took place just a little while ago on the campus of Auburn University? Thank you very much. You guys got to read something other than national news. <laughs> Get away from the secular, because they're not going to tell you this stuff. 
So there was a, a revival on the campus of Auburn University. Over 200 students came forward to be baptized. So they go to the little lake that's there on, on the campus grounds, and you know, numerous people from Auburn University, including the head football coach, helped to baptize these 200 plus students. But this idiot group in Madison, Freedom From Religion Foundation, is now filing suit against the University of Auburn and the football coach because of what took place. Example of against which authority? God's, because they're trying to set which authority over God's? Man's authority over God's. Next example. In uh, a joint Army and Air Force base, a Christian bookstore was established and began to do business <laughs> all with the permission of those in authority on the base. A well-known atheist agitator by the name of Mikey Weinstein came and is now filing suit that it has no business being on the base because it is Christian bookstore. He's trying to set one authority over the other. Man's authority over, and the reason that both situations exist is because they refuse to acknowledge God's authority. Just the same as we're listening in the gospel reading today. Once we refuse to acknowledge God's authority, Rebellion abounds. And that's why we're seeing what's going on in our world today. Refusal to acknowledge God's authority. <clears throat> so what do you do with that? Well, one, and we're all guilty of it in one way or another, one, we all need repentance. And so when we look at the parable that Jesus tells, this is what is important to take away from it. Back to the gospel reading, if you would, John. And we're going to go to the parable, so go a little bit farther, and we're going to come back to this. One, uh, one more. What do you think? Jesus said, a man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, son, we'll work in the vineyard today. He answered, I'm no way. Uh-uh, not going. Anybody ever answer their parents that way? You sure you could get a patient response from mom or dad, did you? I want you to see in this rebellion what? Blatant rebellion. Defiant Rebellion. Open rebellion. He ain't hiding anything. He ain't covering anything up. He's not doing it uh, under the cover of uh, disguise of anything. He's blatantly, openly, defiantly rebelling. No doubt about it. But what's the difference? And we'll come back to that. But what about the next son? Go to the next verse. Verse 30. And he went to the other son and said the same thing. And he answered, I go, sir. Pleasant, obedient, willing son. But what was the result? What do we call this kind of behavior? Thank you very much. Say that just a little bit louder. Passive aggressive. Passive -aggressive. How many of you like to be treated passive aggressively? Oh, yeah, I'll do that. And the problem is are they both guilty of the same thing? Are they both guilty of the same thing? Initially. So, what's the difference? Repentance. What accepted 
Finally, the truth of authority submitted in what? Out of repentance. The other, no. Why? Why did the other refuse? Why did the chief priests, after they knew the truth, refuse? Why? Go back, if you would, to verse 26, John. Notice what it said. No, you're right. 25 is fine. So when Jesus talks about the authority, he said, The baptism of John, where did it come from, the heaven or from man? And they discussed it. Notice what the conclusion was. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, then why didn't you believe him? And if we say from man, we're afraid of the crowd, for all they, they all hold John as a prophet. What's the problem here? Neither situation what? Acknowledges the truth. The truth is, Jesus is the Son of God. The truth is, the authority came from God. The truth is, John's baptism came from God. Neither choice acknowledges that. What stopped them from repenting? It's pride. Does pride get in our way? I, I don't want to look bad. I don't want to sound bad. I don't want to be seen as bad. So, passive aggressive. You don't know I'm being bad. <laughs> but I really am. I smile at you while I spit in your face. <laughs> and the problem with that is it's disobedience. It's not disobedience. But what I want you to see is that Jesus is giving these guys two opportunities to turn and repent. He's still loving them. Not only does he confront him with this, but then he uses the parable as well to try to get them to repent. And so what does he call us? First and foremost, <laughs> we acknowledge the truth. The truth about ourselves and especially our sin and the truth about our Savior. This is the truth that we need to cover the truth of our sin. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He submitted to God's authority, submitted to his will in absolutely every way, shape, and form as he came and lived among us. In his state of humiliation, he gave him all over himself over the authority of his father, carried out his will, suffered, and died. So that he could forgive our sins and give us life. So that he could make things right in our lives and with God again. And that's what we all need. A right relationship with God. And as we get that right relationship, it's only because he has reached out to us to call us to repentance. To call us not just to acknowledge the sin, but to turn. Did you hear the very last part of the Old Testament reading? The very last part of the Old Testament reading is the words that we need to hear on a regular basis. Because this is what we have to do on a regular basis. Verse 32, for I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord. Read it with me, the last line. So turn and live. That's repentance. Turn and live. So turn and live. Turn from your sin. Turn to Christ. Turn to his love. Turn to his forgiveness. Turn to his salvation. Turn and find life in Christ. In a world filled with rebellion, and so much pride because I don't want to look bad in the face of others. The lack of repentance is astounding. But 
what did we hear from the kids? They knew the confession of sins. Maybe we need them to remind us. We said it just this morning. <coughs> Let's go back to the beginning liturgy and the confession and remind you, John. As we, yeah, say it with me. Even though it's my part, say it with me. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And let's go to the next one. But if we, God who is faithful in us, will and Thanks for listening. At Redeemer Lutheran Church, our mission is to share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Learn more about our ministry at RedeemerLutheranGB.com.